Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. I also was an elected delegate for Bernie Sanders, although I didn't make it to the convention as uh, the election results uh, knocked me out uh, and Clinton delegate replaced me. I was a financial analyst and financial journalist, and tonight I'd like to speak to you uh, about the incredible low state of affairs we've achieved in American uh, politics. Uh, tomorrow night is certain to be a slug uh, mud fest. Uh, that we've never seen before. Uh, so when you put all these pieces together, so uh, uh, we have uh, Donald Trump, who cannot speak English properly. Of course, this didn't deter George Bush, uh, which is what we discovered in the last debate. Uh, although we'll see how he does, obviously standing up against Clinton, who uh, has now had this incredibly embarrassing locker room talk uh, which I've never engaged in that I can recall. I've met guys that do. Uh, about a third of the guys you might know, depending on the culture, might be willing to say uh, misogynistic things. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but I don't really, uh, I just feel embarrassed for him. Uh, and I just think that any person, if everything they've ever said was broadcast and soundbited, uh, would have embarrassing things happen to them. But it does tell you something about the guy, obviously, but not a whole lot. Um, really doesn't tell you a whole lot. Uh, so, but we've there we have it with Mr. Trump and with Mrs. Clinton. Uh, it's, it's just amazing, the revelations that are coming out on a daily basis. Now she says she, we need to have a private and a public position on every issue because of all these meetings in secret can make people nervous. Now, that is a very bizarre, uh, so I don't know what she's trying to telegraph there, um, but uh, uh, <clears throat> that was interesting. It doesn't really, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it, it portends ill, uh, but it, it could be a, a sound policy if, if uh, uh, there was no lack of ethics in these, but I can't imagine how anybody would go on a stage and uh, describe a strategy like that. I mean, how your vision would tend towards having to think about something like that rather than having a really good vision that the customer likes, the employee likes, uh, and, you know, business, you find a vision that's attractive to investors, to customers, to vendors. The only one who might not like it are your competitors. So why on earth would you need to have a private and a public policy? But in business, you would have uh, one talk you'd give to investors and another talk you'd give to customers, maybe off the same strategy. Uh, so, but this issue about her saying, can't we just drone this guy with Julian Assange? So if this is true, uh, uh, and uh, since we may never know, we have to look at many of these uh, signatures and footprints and clues to divine what we're dealing with here. But uh, this is essentially something saying that can they have one of their political opponents a silence by murder, um, and uh, it, and it portends very ill for us. Uh, uh, this we are having essentially a mafioso like person uh, in that respect, uh, and it appears that she's turned uh, the Democratic Party into a giant patronage system built around her. But uh, Obama clearly indicated the tables could be quickly turned. Um, but the two machines, I guess, are somewhat uh, merged. I really don't know what the, uh, I guess the Obama machine isn't even launched yet. Uh, because the machine that she's, I mean, we have to see it go through his uh, exit in office. And uh, just like with the Clintons, the fortunes they amassed, the philanthropic foundation that became an economic uh, giant. Uh, but, uh, you know, why would anyone in their right mind want to elect somebody who wanted to have their political uh, opponents uh, executed uh, without trial? Um, and, um, <clears throat> you know, this just adds to, if you look at my channel and look at the previous work I've done, uh, uh, you can see uh, that I've spent a lot of time on Libya. And uh, what happened in Libya from beginning to end was the worst mismanagement and the most callous 
activities. So what we've had a lot of leaks on lately uh, is the issue of what uh, Seymour Hersh called the rat line. So uh, it was very brazen during Libya that, sh that Obama and Clinton were shipping weapons against the UN 1973. So UN 1973 doesn't call for regime change, and it does call for an arms embargo on all parties. But what they decided was that it was okay to bring weapons into the rebels of trying to overthrow Gaddafi, but it wasn't okay for any weapons to come into the regime, and it was okay to remove the regime. So they reversed the two, and every line of 1973, if you went over it with me, and if you read some of my old stuff, uh, 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 was like that. It was like Orwellian, how it was twisted. It's like when you want to release more mercury in the air and you call it the Blue Skies Act. Uh, incredibly callous and cold-hearted all the way through, down to the end. Um, the way that country was handled and then dumped like a used condom uh, after Clinton was dissed by uh, a bunch of Islamic extremists that she had been very good to. Um, now, I'm not saying Clinton didn't sincerely want Libya to have a modern, Western-oriented country uh, where the people had conventional rights. Remember, conventional rights is property rights. It means the right to have capitalism. What they had in Libya was they had the right to have socialism. And in retrospect, uh, they were vastly better off because much of their country is gone forever now. Culturally, you cannot rape a country and bomb it uh, and have it be the same afterwards. It's just like a, a, a person. A person can't be raped and be the same afterwards. And that's what's happened in Libya, but much more. I'm, I, don't, I didn't personally walk through every single event in Iraq. So, uh, but for Libya, for me, it's very vivid because I, I maintain constant observation. And the horror stories I hear of families being held in their uh, basements against their will with their children, male and female, and young women being raped for years. Uh, this is according to Mabruk Derbesh, doctor of economics at the University of Tripoli, now exiled, who was a big uh, advocate of getting rid of Gaddafi, because, uh, but this is not what they wanted. They didn't want a Western-led invasion of their country. They, uh, especially what happened, I mean, it was like, uh, give them an inch and they take a mile, you know? Uh, yeah, they had these uh, Islamic extremists they, that the uh, liberal reformists uh, were both up in arms against Gaddafi along with the uh, bear bear. But there were a lot of people supported Gaddafi all over the country, tribes and people. And uh, people liked having socialism, liked having uh, no Sharia law. Uh, they were very open society. So, you know, Clinton really trashed Libya. Just she harmed it so badly uh, that... For me, it's inconceivable to ever vote for her. So here we are with these two demonic personalities. You know, I harbor, uh, I don't care about Trump at all. I don't mind him. I don't dislike him. Uh, and I don't like him. I don't see him as really a uh, political thinker. I see him as this sort of cloud moving through the sky. Uh, and what his effect is going to be, see, this the big specter here is uh, when supposedly do not forget they have a long memory of both people who helped and hurt them and no one other than uh bernie sanders indirectly julian assange have hurt clinton more in recent times than uh, and obama and their uh, centrist corporate liberal neoliberal system uh none of these guys uh okay have been as big a threat to Clinton as Vladimir Putin and Obama and the Western order. And what he has, uh, so uh, I've heard so much nonsense about Russia and Putin. I could criticize Putin uh, by saying in different times, uh, especially that it's, uh, you know, that uh, they sh he should, uh, chill out, uh, allow the country to run itself and not to be uh, old school patriarchal taskmaster. 
Uh, but I'm not, you see right now for the people in the world who aren't eager to watch this invasion capitalism eat away at every country it hasn't already consumed, uh, he represents somebody who can stand up for systems that don't necessarily fit in into the Ivy League people's view of the meritocracy. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you'll make them better by bombing them or arming their uh, insane criminals and extremists because ISIS and these groups absorb all kinds of disaffected elements and criminal elements as well as religious pious people that just believe something that uh, that uh, is incomprehensible to uh, to many and and we only see the, the you know the bad news about ISIS or maybe some branch of ISIS that doesn't chop people's heads off and just runs markets and towns in a pious fashion and everybody loves it I mean we don't we don't in other words there are probably some uh, good people in ISIS if you accept Salafists as good people uh, as well as uh, criminals exploiting the system for their own gain, for their own perverse pleasures. Uh, you know, it's kind of like how uh, a soldiers of fortune would attract really weird types. Uh, for those of you of my age or older, remember we had Soldier of Fortune magazine and all the 7-Elevens and attracted a certain type, not the type you really want to build a civilization around. So Putin uh, stood up for Syria uh, for uh, Assad. Assad does have a base in Syria. He's done very well in elections. You could say that these elections are unfair, but uh, uh, there, if any serious analyst would see a significant support and uh, it's hard to, uh, I mean, he, there could have been more push against him even within their uh, electoral system. Uh, so every system, you have to look relatively within that system, how things are happening. The U.S. system isn't completely fair. We only get Republicans and Democrats who actually achieve and maintain power. Uh, so our voices are constricted. Um, and uh, we can sometimes take over these uh, structures through a popular insurrection. But you can see with the Sanders Clinton campaign that was ruthlessly suppressed. Maybe. Uh, so. Um, so there's uh, the, the big concern for me about Clinton is that I think that she is going to drive an incredibly aggressive policy against Russia. And what has happened is that the U.S. has gone ahead and spoken openly about striking the Syrian Arab army directly. And the Russians have said if attack on the Syrian Arab army by the United States would be considered an attack on Russia. So we are exactly at the Cuba Missile Crisis right now and no one is even talking about it with the caveat that the u.s would have to attack and we already did we already did kill about 70 syrian arab army uh units uh and uh and so it's really really uh when clinton said we have a public policy and a private policy so the public policy is assad is a bad guy and has to go but the, the uh, a sane person would say years ago, Syria is a very precious laboratory of cultures. Language is about to die out. Religions that you've never even heard of that are variants of Judaism. You know, Judaism still has existing cousins left in the Middle East, as does Christianity that broke off the first hundred years of Christianity. Uh, there are, are sects that uh, tell us about the origin of Christianity and Judaism. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, uh, and, and uh, there are uh, many archaeological treasures yet to be discovered that will shed light on uh, religious history, archaeology, uh, the nature of how far back mankind goes, and also sheds light to us about how we could live. Because the more we learn about other human societies in the old days, the more we can learn of what's possible. So, for example, Around 10,000 BC in Eastern Turkey, there's this place called Gobekli Tepe, which is a extremely uh, ornate uh, carved structure, uh, which is four times older than, uh, well, uh, Stonehenge is 2,500 BC. This is 10,000 BC. So it's uh, four times further back in prehistory, uh, uh, pre-Christian times than Stonehenge. Uh, and from there, there was a, uh, 
a, a society that then went to Çatal Huyuk in uh, in Turkey, uh, uh, where there's a seem to be a, a mother goddess worshiping culture, and then this culture seems to show up in Eastern Europe and Northern Greece and Serbia, and they developed the first uh, language, written language. Although the archaeologists are not willing to call it that, they call it like a pictographic system, but it's very similar to other ancient languages uh, uh, in the number of characters and things like that. It's got about 250 characters. Uh, but uh, this society was egalitarian and showed little evidence of uh, warfare, but they had a very bizarre habit of burning their towns down and moving every uh, 20 years. So they ended up deforesting half of Romania over the course of thousands of years. Uh, and uh, so if we never learned about this place, we wouldn't know that you could have a virtually conflict-free egalitarian society that could have lived probably forever in a state of near paradise had they not had this peculiar custom of burning their towns down. This goes back to 7,000 years ago. Uh, so when you destroy the Middle East, you're destroying our ability to see how we could be by understanding more about what we have been. Uh, and it can be very helpful to religious scholars if you're a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim or a student of uh, our anthropology. So it's a very great crime to destroy Syria uh, just selfishly for the rest of us or Iraq. Uh, these are the origins of mankind. This is the most sacred place for human culture. Africa is very sacred because uh, all of us come from it. And then the Middle East, uh, where there is so much of human philosophy that uh, from India to Greece, you have all of the great religious traditions were all between India and Greece that I can think of. The, the Hellenistic philosophy, which is really what's the difference between Judaism and Christianity the influence of Hellenistic Gnosticism, which created the Christian message, uh, the ideas of uh, uh, Plato and Aristotle and Socrates. Uh, and uh, 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 so then you've got the Buddha over in India, and you've got this guy Mani, who uh, started a, a religion that to me has some kind of parallels almost to Scientology, and he would adapt it to every country. It was this second biggest religion in the world at one point, and it's Monarchism, and uh, uh, it has some connections to Islam. Um, some of, uh, uh, all, uh, so it's all very complicated. And um, so uh, Putin did uh, save the country uh, from uh, a, a victory by Al-Qaeda potentially. Uh, and uh, 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 stop this from happening. And then they're blaming him for all of the email leaks that are going on. And they basically tried to pull the Ukraine out of the Russian sphere of influence, because you've got to understand that Ukraine isn't really a country. Uh, the way uh, other countries have developed, it was ripped from the belly of Russia. It was a state of Russia that was... Uh, uh, split off when Boris Yeltsin just self-destructed the Soviet Union in one drunken night, uh, the way I would describe it, uh, because in some cases that you could make a justification to dissolve the USSR if you hated it. Uh, uh, for example, the, uh, the Baltic states were clearly held in subjugation by Russia. Uh, maybe some of the Central Asian states you could make an argument for, though they've been run by Russia for over a hundred years, like our own Wild West in the U.S. Uh, but um, the Ukraine is more than, ha is a historically part of Russia, and it's where the Russian uh, Principality of Kiev, which is a start of the state of Rus, the Russian state, comes from. So uh, we got involved and created a lot of problems and uh, allied with uh, people that use Nazi insignia, uh, so she has a very bad blood with Putin. And the long and short of it is, I'm very concerned that we might get to an accidental nuclear war uh, if Clinton is elected president. And uh, she's also flipped off the progressives by hiring Kane, by having people like Breedlove, uh, uh, this new uh, a female potential head of uh, uh, the Pentagon, whose name eludes me, who's even possibly more hawkish than Breedlove. So 
It's a very gloomy situation for us Americans to be confronted by somebody who's clearly uh, not, uh, you know, Mr. Smith comes to Washington, uh, Donald Trump, uh, uh, or uh, if he is, he's a very uh, unusual incarnation of that. Uh, but, uh, you know, he denies climate change. Uh, he talks about a broken down military. I mean, if talk about a private message in a pub, it's very conflicted. I mean, the U.S. military is not short of hardware and money and power. Uh, the, it's short of common sense and efficiency. And he knows that. So I don't, uh, I'm afraid with Donald Trump, there clearly is a public and a private policy as well. Uh, and I suppose it's true with all politicians. Uh, but it's a, a situation that gives one a uh, cause for despair. Um, so here, if obviously, I think Gil, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson should pull together. Uh, I wish we had another choice besides these two people. Although, frankly, I think Trump is not the worst of our fears amongst the Republicans. I think that uh, Ted Cruz is. Um, but uh, it's not a good situation. My name is Alexander Hagan. Good night and good luck.